We will start in about five minutes. We'll get started. And uh, I'm going to be showing you two. Uh, so basically, I'll be showing you uh, another view. You can see in the gallery view. I'm going to be showing you the other view of where, you know, where I'm working. So you can see in the ball what's exactly happening and everything. And I will spotlight that video so that you can see it clearly when I'm not speaking. So if you'd like to just introduce yourselves quickly, just your name and where you're from while we wait for the rest, it would be great to know you. Uh, my name is Beatriz. I am from uh, Colombia originally in South America, but I have lived in the US for 21 years. I live in wow. Oakland Park, Kansas. And I'm trying to learn as much as I can, taking classes because I would love to do this for a living. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So we have somebody who joined right now. Anybody else would like to just introduce themselves quickly? If you're shy, you don't want. It's totally up to you. But if you like. Would love to know who you are and where you're from. Hi, my name is Giselle. I'm from Puerto Rico. I do this part time. I have a full time job as an HR uh, generalist, and uh, I just like to learn more. Uh, I took a few courses of this, but I like to continue continue with the learning because every person has different techniques so this is what i'm doing today learning your techniques thank you so much for joining us and hopefully you're gonna find the class very useful uh, we're gonna be covering a lot of things today uh, so hopefully everybody will find the class useful i'll just come to that once we finish the introductions uh, anybody else wants to just say hi So far, we've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, six participants. Hello. Hi, my name is Olu. Um, I live in Doha, Qatar. Nice to meet you. Same. So do you do this as a hobby or uh, are you trying to just do it as a business? Uh, I teach, so that's my day job. Uh, I'm trying to um, learn more about pastries so I can do it as a business. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So I think we can get started. I'll just introduce myself quickly. I'm Shahrazad. Uh, I'm the author and baker behind the blog Shahrazad's Cuisine. I've been doing this for about uh, eight years now. Uh, so I was a full-time banker, a corporate banker, and at the same time I used to bake as a hobby, but then I decided to just leave banking completely and dedicate myself to baking. Um, so um, I think I recently started doing meringues and uh, it's uh, so much fun. It's so easy. Uh, you can play around with it a lot. You can just uh, adapt it to any theme that you're doing. So whether you're doing this as a business and you want to complement your menu or whether you, you're doing it for your son's birthday and you want to, you know, to, to do something that is relevant to the theme, meringues are so easy to do. And I think they are a bit not overdone so you can use it you know for your advantage because it's not like all over the place not everybody is doing it like macarons for example so uh, it's quite unique uh, so today we're going to cover a lot of things we're going to cover the amazing recipe uh, of sugar art canada that is foolproof and uh, it's not going to fail you from the first time even if you try it uh, with the tips and tricks that i'm going to share with you you're going to get it right from the first time and then you're gonna use it and be creative. We're gonna cover different designs. 
So we're gonna cover, um, you know, the fall designs that you saw in the class advertisement, like the fox. I'm gonna show you uh, those designs. So we're gonna do like the fox design. We're gonna do the snail. Um, we're gonna do some leaves for fall. We're gonna do the mushroom. And we're gonna also do some pumpkins because you know now it's pumpkin season, fall and Halloween. Uh, in addition, we're gonna do some rosettes and we're gonna show you how you can build like a bouquet. And of course, we're gonna also sh demonstrate to you how to use the meringue transfer sheet that Sugar Art Canada, uh, you know, sells so that you can also use these if you like because you can adapt them to any thing that you want. So we're gonna cover all that. It's a live class, feel free at any point. I'm gonna mute you so that you can have like a smooth running class without any noises. But at any point, if you have any question, just unmute yourself and ask me your question. This is meant to be interactive. We're gonna use some color, like I'm gonna choose the colors for the different designs, but by all means, if you want like your ro rosettes to be another color, just use whatever color you want. Like just be creative, enjoy. And any questions you have, just let me know and, uh, you know, we'll be happy to cover those for you. So first we're going to get started with the recipe. I'm going to shift my camera to my other bowl so I can show you exactly what I'm doing. But as I said, anytime, if you have any question, just unmute yourself and let me know. Okay. So let's shift this. Okay. So the first thing that uh, we do uh, whenever we're doing meringues, like if we're doing Swiss meringue or if we're doing here meringue, the first thing is to uh, clean uh, the bowl with white vinegar or with lemon juice, okay? Because what this is, I'm using white vinegar, which you get from the supermarket, because what this does is that it removes any residue of butter or oil because these will prevent your egg whites from wilting. If there's any residue of a single drop of oil or butter, it's gonna prevent your meringue from whipping, and obviously we don't want that. So do not skip this step, it's quite important. Some people like to use lemon juice, I like to use uh, white vinegar, because I feel it will not affect the taste. So we're gonna wipe the bowl, and we're gonna wipe the whisk attachment, okay? We're using the whisk attachment. Anytime you're doing your end, use the whisk attachment. And the reason I'm doing this in front of you, I, I could have done it in, before the class, is because I want you to see like, that you need to wipe the uh, whisk attachment thoroughly, like all the sides, because you don't know where the butter can get stuck, right? So just be thorough. And this is very, very important. A lot of people fail in doing meringues because, for example, their egg whites are not whipping up, and this could be one of the main reasons, okay? So just wipe your, the tools you're using with vinegar or lemon juice, whatever is available for you. And one more thing we're gonna wipe is the spatula. I prefer to use a rubber spatula when doing meringues. So we're gonna wipe it because we're gonna use it to stir the egg white and the sugar, okay? So that's the first step we always do whenever we're doing anything that needs meringues, whether it's macarons, whether it's meringues, whether it's Swiss meringue butter. Okay. Let me see if anybody else has joined so that we can admit them. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do, and I think you guys have the recipe, but anyway, we're gonna go by step by step. We have here 120 grams of egg whites, which I've separated already for the class. So this is only egg whites. Make sure you don't have any yolk because it will, again, affect the ability to whip up the meringue. So 120 grams of egg whites, or if you don't have a kitchen scale, you can use approximately four eggs, but I do advise you to invest in a kitchen scale because you know using exact measurements in recipes like this and macarons is one of the key you know, tips for success. So we have 120 grams of uh, egg whites. To that, we're gonna add 250 grams of granulated sugar. So this is the normal fine sugar that you use in your cup of coffee or tea. So it's not the icing or confectioner sugar, it's the granulated sugar, but it's fine. It's not like the coarse one. So we're just gonna add it to the egg whites and we'll just stir them around a bit. Just mix them in. 
Now, the next thing we're gonna do Okay, we don't need to stir them a lot because we're gonna stir them overheat. Um, so I've got this, it's like a medium saucepan, and I've got some water over here, as you can see, about like a little bit, because I don't want the water, the hot water, to touch the bottom of the bowl. So when I put the bowl on top, I don't want the bowl to be touching the hot water, okay? So we're gonna put this uh, water over the uh, medium heat. We're gonna let it simmer. We don't want it to boil. We want hot water. And then we'll, we'll, we'll move to the next step. So let's put this over hot water. We'll wait for it to simmer a bit. And then we will just go to the stove top and just do our meal, okay? So if you have any questions at this point, just let me know. Otherwise, so basically the first thing I'm going to show you when we do the meringues is how to use the meringue transfer sheets from Sugar Art Canada. So these uh, meringue transfer sheets from Sugar Art Canada are basically, uh, basically they are specific to meringue. They have different products, but these are specific to meringue. So basically what you do here, um, as I'm going to show you later, we're going to pipe the meringue on top of this sheet. Uh, so when we're using meringue transfer sheets from Sugar Art Canada, you don't need to put any parchment paper on uh, the, the baking sheet. These will act as your parchment paper. So all you have to do is just put this sheet, okay? No need to put anything else. You will put it, you'll put the glossy side downward, right? So that you, so that the designs will transfer to your end, okay? So this is, I'm going to show you this later on. I just wanted to let you know that when we're using this sheet, you don't need to add any parchment paper, okay? So I'm just letting my water simmer right now. Remember, we don't want it to boil. We just want hot water, okay? And then once it is hot, I'm gonna just take the camera over there and I'm gonna show you, uh, you know, how we uh, basically heat this meringue mixture, the egg whites with the sugar. Now, I mentioned uh, basically in the class description that I'm gonna show you if you are using a digital candy thermometer. This is a digital candy thermometer. And you can easily find it on Amazon or in, in your local baking supply store. Uh, if you are using it, I'm going to show you what is the temperature that we need to reach. And I honestly, when I'm doing meringues, because we're going to bake them, I don't really use a candy thermometer. So this is totally optional because we're going to bake the meringues. So we're not worried about salmonella, we're going to bake them. But if, for example, you were using, doing buttercream, I advise you to use the digital candy thermometer. But as I said, I'm going to show you, like, if you are using a digital candy thermometer and you want to be sure, like, you're using it to know when you need to stop, basically the temperature that you need to stop at, I'm going to show you today, okay? So as I said, I'm just waiting for the water to heat up. In the meantime, I'm going to shift the camera there so you can see it. So I'm just heating up the water, and I'll just put the bowl on top, okay? And as soon as the water starts to heat up, you want to make sure that you're always stirring the mixture, because you don't want basically the eggs to cook, you don't want scrambled eggs. So we're just trying to heat the mixture here, so that we can whip it up into a meringue. Let me just make sure the connection is working. Okay. okay. So when we start off heating the mixture, you will see that it's like white in color and it's like thick. Uh, so what we're trying to achieve is that it turns more opaque color, like transparent and more liquidy. Okay, this is what we're trying to achieve here when we're cooking it. And the sugar will tend to stick to the side of the bowl, so just keep, you know, scraping them down. Of course, when you're doing something like this, whipping up a meringue, don't really the pan and go because, you know, the eggs might cook. You don't want egg pieces in your meringue. So this is very important. So we're going to need about seven to eight minutes. Sometimes it might go up to ten. It depends on, you know, the heat in your stove. But... I'm going to show you when to stop. As I said, right now the mixture is still thick and glossy. 
we're looking for a liquidy texture. And if you don't have a candy thermometer and you want to test the stradina after seven to eight minutes, you can just like take a little bit of the mixture, rub it between your fingers. If you're feeling only a little bit of the sugar, then it's ready. If you're still feeling a lot of sugar between your fingers, then it means you need to stir more. Okay. Now, if you're using a candy thermometer, like the one I showed you, so you just turn it on, and you will set the temperature to 64 degrees Celsius. I can tell you at the end of the class how much that is in Fahrenheit, or you can convert it now if you're using a candy thermometer. So you just put uh, the thermometer in the mixture, and basically you're going to stop when it reaches 64 degrees Celsius. Then you can stop. Or, as I said, you don't need a thermometer for this recipe. You can just test it by your hands. So you can see the mixture is already starting to dissolve together and turn more liquidy. So we're going to keep going. It takes a little bit of time, so just be patient. So make sure that the one is okay. We're just saying now, always scrape down the sugar crystals from the side of the bowl. Can you see the mixture starting to turn more into a homogeneous mixture? But still, you can see the sugar, so we need to keep going. Place my finger now and like pull out a little bit of the mixture, I can still feel like a little bit of the sugar crystal. So that means I need to keep going. I felt my oven preheated already, and meringues need to cook at a very low temperature, which is 80 degrees Celsius. Uh, and the reason is because if you bake them at a the high temperature, they're going to just break. You won't get the nice shape, you're gonna feel like they're cracking. So always make sure you're making them at the low temperature as directed in the recipe. You see my water is simmering, it's not boiling, and most importantly, it's not touching the bottom of the bowl. So I'm gonna keep stirring. The mixture is turning like more liquid, less, you know, thick. But still we have also keep stirring until you can no longer feel the sugar in your fingers. You're still going to feel it a little bit, but the less you feel it, the more your rind are going to be smooth without any like bumps. So let's say if we use the thermometer now just to check the temperature, for example. At 30 degrees Celsius. So we still have time to go because you remember I said at 64 degrees Celsius. So we're not there yet. But the more you see you heat it, the more you're going to see the mixture more liquidy, less thick. And this is what we're looking for. So just be patient when the rind just takes time. That's the only part that takes time, actually. The rest of the process is quite straightforward and easy. It can already 
as you see, the next one is very, very light, turning into a liquid. When we started, it was thick, the sugar was thick, but now it's kind of dissolving more and more to the next one. Try again. Everyone overcooks the eggs. Still feel the sugar, but I'm starting to feel it less and less. I'm gonna wash my hands in the room. At this point, I'm gonna make sure keep stirring so that I don't overcook the egg. But don't be afraid, really, like it's quite straightforward. As long as you're stirring, you're gonna get it right. Just be patient, don't say like, okay, I'll just remove it because then you're gonna see like little sugar pieces in your brain, which won't look nice. But if you're patient and you dissolve it to the end, you're gonna get very smooth brain. I'm showing you both techniques, whether you're using a thermometer or whether you're not, how you can check it. So it's 50, 51 degrees Celsius, so we're getting there. We're so close. Now the eggs are going to start to heat up completely. So we're almost there. So yeah, 60 degrees Celsius. I think the water is starting to boil now. That's why it's becoming fast. 64. So in terms of temperature, we're already there, 64. Again. If I touch with my fingers, yeah, I can no longer feel the sugar at all. And it's quite hot, so I'm just going to remove it immediately from the heat. I'm not going to put it in for a single second more. And then we're going to go back to here. Okay. So at this point, we don't need the spatula. So now, Check the speaker view. Okay, so now that we've heated the egg and the sugar mixture, it's quite hot. We're going to transfer it to our stand mixer and we're going to start mixing it at medium high speed using the whisk attachment that we cleaned in the beginning with vinegar. Okay, so at medium high speed at about four, we start before we go on to six. And what we're gonna do now is liquid, it's white. We want it to turn into a stiff, you know, glossy meringue, which I'm gonna show you, of course, different stages so you can know exactly what you need to reach. So we're gonna start at a speed of four for one minute, then we're gonna increase the speed to about six. So I'm going to increase the speed now to six and let it be.
I'm going to stop to check this because I don't want to overload it in the rank as well. But I think it's still liquidy. So let's just check. So you see, when I lift it off, it's still falling into the bowl. That means it's not ready. Stiff peaks mean when you lift it off, nothing is going to fall and it's going to just stick to the whisk. I'll show you when we that stage. So this means we need to keep going. Okay? So we're going to go back to mixing at a high speed of six to eight now. Because we're almost there. starting to get thicker but it's still falling off the whisk. Again, it means they're not ready. Keep going. You see the very nice white color that comes with meringue. This is very nice. So if you're doing white meringues, you don't need to add any color. Unlike buttercream which comes out yellow, meringues come out super white. So we're gonna keep going. Again, as you see, I stop many times just to make sure that I don't overwork the right. So you see now it's moving very slowly, but still it moves when I stop. So I'm just gonna beat it for two, three more minutes. Basically, what I'm looking for is when I lift it, nothing moves, just the stays like this. So let's just do one more round, like two, three more minutes. Now, okay, I think it can do a little bit more. So, do you see now the difference? Like, nothing is falling off from the whisk. It's a little bit soft because it's still moving, so we're going to keep going. This is basically what you need to do when you're doing meringue. It needs to be completely stiff, doesn't move when you lift off the whisk. grams of icing sugar. So this sugar is more like powder sugar, confectioner's sugar, and we're going to add it all at once, and we don't need to sift it. We're just going to add it as it is. And we're going to mix again until again we get stiff peaks, completely stiff and stable peaks that don't move. Okay? So let's beat for another few minutes at high speed. First at low speed so that it doesn't go all over your kitchen. But once it's blended in, you can increase the speed. Okay. I think we should 
sugar then to stick around the edges. So I'm just going to scrape down the sides of the bowl just to let the icing sugar blend in. We're already done. I'm just going to scrape down the sides, mix it a bit, and then we're ready to start coloring. Now, if you lift off the whisk, you're getting the amazing, like, stiff peak points. Even here, if you try to, like, invert the bowl, nothing, you know, nothing happens. It won't fall off. So this shows you that the meringue is ready. Okay, I'm just going to take it off the electricity and then show you exactly a closer look of the whisk. So... So you see how it's like not, not moving unless I move it, of course. So our meringue is ready. It's glossy, it's shiny, it's white. This is basically what you're looking for. questions before we move on to coloring the meringue or was it clear and straightforward for you let me just check if you want to ask a question just unmute yourself and let me know sorry just a quick question does the the egg and sugar solution does it have to get very thick before i add the icing sugar i miss that part yeah, it has to be like uh, stiff peaks before you add the icing sugar. So basically, when you lift off the whisk, it has to be like pointy and doesn't move, you know? So when you okay. lift off the whisk, it's not moving, it means it's ready. You just add the icing sugar and you stir it for two, three more minutes and that's it, you're ready. Okay, all right, thanks. Hi. Hi, Hi my name is Mireille. Um, the baking thing started with, started with me last March during COVID, and now I have a page which is a bit active here, and I'm like selling cakes. And uh, my hit was the pavlova, so I I'm dealing with meringue, but I have never done the step you did at first, which is um, melting the sugar on the st steaming water uh, with the egg whites. Usually, what I do uh -huh. is I the egg white and once it gets stiffer on the edges I start adding the uh, caster sugar uh, gradually onto the meringue so I just wanted to understand what is the difference am I doing anything wrong or is this another type of meringue you are doing because I uh, I do this meringue for the pavlova specifically so actually no I think I mean it's just a different technique it's just a different technique because for example when I'm doing the meringue for my Swiss meringue buttercream I don't heat it over a bain marie I just heat it directly over the stove top uh, so I think it's just a different technique that's it um, there are different kinds of recipes for example when I started doing meringues I started doing them without any icing sugar like just egg whites and caster sugar but I wasn't happy with the texture so then I discovered this recipe like the sugar art canada recipe and i loved it and i've been you know using that so i just wanted to ask one more question did you uh, my kids came so i got distracted a bit did you add corn flour to the to the because icing sugar has corn or starch corn starch so no yeah. need to add That's why I add. yeah okay just so when you add sugar you don't need to add the corn flour the corn starch yeah yeah you don't need to so you add corn starch in your recipe I do, yeah. Um, I, I basically do four eggs with 250 grams of um, uh, caster sugar. And then I add one spoon of vinegar and one spoon of cornstarch and a lot of vanilla powder at the end to remove the eggy smell from the mm. This is my. So, so I think it's just a technique, different technique, different recipe. That's a, there's different ways to do things. 
But this one, yeah, just uses three ingredients, which are the egg whites and the sugar, which we melt them. And then we just whip them to a meringue and then we add the icing sugar at the end after we've whipped them oh, into a stiff it, show, it shows, I don't think it's showing well. Showing, this yeah, is, this is the pavlova. Yeah, this is the pavlova. Looks amazing. Okay, great, thank you. I'll go, I'll leave you. Go. No worries. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the other view uh, because we're doing quite different designs today as we mentioned in the beginning. Uh, but first, we're gonna use the white. So we're going to use a little bit of white because we, I want to show you how to do on the meringue transfer sheet and we're going to use the white for the mushroom and the, for the facial features of the fox. So we're going to need a little bit of white. So I'm just going to use a large mark and I'm using here uh, just small piping bags because we, we have different colors. But if we were doing just one or two colors, we'll use like the big piping bag. So, for the, for the meringue transfer sheet by Sugar Art Canada, there are different ways to do it. You can either do, do a rosette like this. So this design, we call it a rosette. Of course, it depends on the size of the transfer that you are doing. Because, for example, these are small designs, so we'll have to do like a small rosette. But if, for example, I was doing something like so for example if you were doing like a little bit bigger design then you can do your rosette a little bit bigger right and this these uh, designs are going to transfer to your meringue uh, i'm going to show you that's why i'm doing them at first so they're going to have some time in the office i can show you how they transfer okay or you, so you can either do a rosette or you can do like, uh, what do you call the other, the, let my mind now, like the ice, uh, like, you know, if you're using the round tip, then you can do the meringue kisses, basically, we call them the meringue kisses. So, um, so since I'm going to be using this for the mushroom, um, Actually, I want to show you the rosette because I like that design better, okay? I'm just going to put a little bit of white meringue. I'm not going to color it. And the best color to use with the Sugar Art Canada meringue transfers is white, so that you can see the image clearly when it transfers. I try to use like orange and pink. You'll still see it, but it won't be as nice and you know bright as when you're using white meringue. And by the way, as you saw, we didn't add any vanilla uh, because it's quite sweet and it's quite tasty without anything. But uh, if you feel like you're feeling egg, egg, uh, you know, egg taste, but I never, you know, noticed that with this recipe. You can always add like half a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. So I'm just gonna get a scissor. So I'm using here the tip Wilton 1M, which is a star tip. It's a very famous tip. Everybody uses it. Uh, but you can use any star tip. Okay? So there are two ways to do this. As I said, if you're using a Sugar Art Canada transfer sheet, you don't need to put any parchment paper. Just put the sheet like this, the glossy side down, and just start piping your design. So you can either do like this, like just like a star, and just go up. So my hand is 90 degrees. And I'm just piping like uh, an ice cream swirl that goes upward. So this is one way. Another way you can just pipe like small stars like this. If you just want to add them, for example, to the cake. Or you can do, as I showed you, the rosette. So the rosette, because these are small designs, we have to do a small rosette. So you start at the center and you're going to go anti-clockwise against the clock. And then you end it like this. So you're just trying to form a flower, 90 degrees my hand, and I'm going anti-clockwise, just trying to form a small flower like this, okay? As I said, if the design is bigger, you can, you know, just control with your hand how much um, meringue you're gonna, you want to come out so that that will affect the size. Okay, so just like this, 
I sometimes get asked questions on my videos when I post these, like, if I use part of the sheet, can I use it, you know, another time? No. So as soon as you bake it, that's it. You can't use it another time. So it's best to just try to use all of the sheet, um, you know, if you're going to use it. So I'm not going to waste all the meringue on this because this is for demonstration purposes and we want to do some other nice cute designs today. So if you don't have any questions on the meringue transfers, I'm just going to put it in the oven. As I said, my oven is at 80 degrees Celsius already. So uh, it's ready for these to be baked. I wanted to start with them so that I can show you how they lift off before we end the class. Okay, so I'm going to put them in the oven. The recipe says two hours, but honestly for me, like even after one hour, one hour and a half, I feel they're ready, especially because they're small stars and they're small, you know, shapes, they tend to finish quickly. And I'll show you how to check their readiness. Okay, I'm gonna put them in the oven. And yeah, one more thing we need to cover. So when you're doing, if you're just doing a batch, you're gonna use the Sugar Art Canada sheet. You do this. A sheet, you have another sheet that you're doing with the same batch, just make sure that you bake them one sheet at a time and you bake them at the bottom rack of the oven. The bottom rack of the oven tends to be the hottest spot in your oven and that's what you need because we're baking at a low temperature and if you put a sheet on top it might you know affect the, the bottom sheet may affect the, the transfers at the top of the top sheet so you don't want that just bake them one uh, pan at a time. If you're doing more than one uh, you know, sugar art kind of the sheets. But if you're doing other designs, then that's fine. But for the sheets, just one sheet at a time. Okay, so let's color our meringue. We're going to color everything, then we're going to move on to doing the different designs. So for the fox, you know, fox is like very trendy during the fall. People do fox cakes. So we thought it would be cute to do like fox meringues. And for the fox, you can either use pink or ivory. I found that I have this peach color by Pro Gel. But just feel free to use whatever color you want for the fox. If you don't have peach or ivory, or you can even use coral or very light pink, or you can even use light orange, okay? So when you're doing meringues or you're doing buttercream or anything, I advise you to use gel colors. I think they're the best. They don't affect the texture of the meringue or the buttercream or even the macaron. So I like to use either by Chef Master or Americolor because they tend to be bright colors. Uh, and you also have ProGel is a good brand. If you're going to use Wilton, I advise you to shop the Wilton Color Right because the normal Wilton colors are very like pastel and they, they don't give you a, a bright pigment. If you want to use Wilton, use the Wilton Color Right brand. I have that I'm going to show you. So this is the Wilton Color Right brand. They are sold individually or as a packet. So if you want Wilton, just try to get the color right because these are made to give more pigments. Otherwise, Chef Master are amazing. Like you put a few drops and you get a bright color. So we're gonna use the peach for the fox. So we can just mix uh, in a clean bowl. I have a question, please. Let me just change my screen. Yes, tell me. My meringue looks too dry. What do I do? Sorry? The meringue is dry? Yeah, it looks dry, yes. Can you show me? It's, so yeah it's supposed to be dry this is what we're looking for it's not supposed to move it's supposed to be stiff like this is it glossy okay. the color is the color glossy I would have say I mean after adding the icing sugar it wasn't that glossy anymore before it was yes okay so this means maybe you overwhipped the meringue a bit it's okay, you can still do the designs, just go ahead, okay, pipe the designs and everything, but maybe next time just start, stop beating a little bit before and then I add the icing sugar. Okay. Okay. Right. But it okay. is supposed to be okay. stiff. It is supposed to be stiff. Okay, but if it's a little bit not glossy, maybe it means it's over okay. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Thank you. No worries. But just go on. Just type your designs. Okay. One second. Where's the other screen? Okay. So I'm going to put a little bit for the fox so that we can mix in the peach color. Okay. Always best to just add a little bit and then add more if you want rather than you know adding a lot and getting a darker color than what you want. Careful not to like squish the meringue a lot. You don't want to dissipate it. You're just trying to mix in the color. Okay. So this is for the fox. So for the fox design, we're gonna use a round tip, a circle tip. You can you either have small or big. Depending on which tip you use, you're going to get a different size for the fox. I want the size to be like a standard size, so I'm going to use Wilson 1A or the big circle. And for the facial details and uh, the mushroom, we can use the smaller round tip. So. As always, just put your piping at first, then your batter, meringue in this case. So these are just like, these designs are just meant to inspire you and just basically show you how to structure a design. For example, when I saw the fox, I knew that, you know, I have to use a circle tip, I have to do like kind of a rosette, but not counterclockwise, the other way, clockwise. So just, just see the design in front of you and then just start figuring out, for example, what tip do I need to use to achieve this design? What are the features? Do I need to use more than one color? Then it becomes very easy. So we chose these designs because, you know, just to inspire you and show you basically how to color and how to come up, you know, how to do, implement the design basically. So we have now the peach for the fox. We have this white from the previous mixture, but as I told you, we need the small round tip for the mushroom and the fox facial features. So we're gonna transfer this into another bag. And don't worry, if you don't get it right today, we're gonna send you the recording of the class and you're gonna have it forever. So you can just redo this, uh, you know, at your own pace. So don't worry, just focus on, you know, understanding, asking your questions. Okay. I um, need a little bit more white. The next color we need is we're gonna do remember a snail. So where are the designs so that we can use them try them? So we're gonna do the snail and uh, so look at this snail. Like okay, how do we okay how we're gonna achieve this shape? Obviously we need the white to do the S shape, and then this is just a rosette. So you're gonna need green and white. If you wanted to achieve these two colors, this is just nothing green, a little bit of green batter mixed with a little bit of pink. So for the uh, for the leaves and for the snail, we're gonna need green, okay? We're just gonna get a little bit of the white again. And we're gonna color it green. 
So this bright green, I think uh, there are different kinds of green colors, but for bright green, just always use uh, either something that says bright green or leaf green. So either leaf green, and the different brands call it leaf green as well, or bright green, not like dark green or um, holy green. Holy green is more dark. So I think for leaves, it's nice to be a little bit on the lighter side. Okay, this color is stuck on the names on my color. Oh, this is Chef Master. Again, Chef Master calls it the same leaf green. Just whenever you're using Chef Master, just use a little drop because a little goes a long way. See that like a very nice green. So for the leaves, we use the tip, which is in the shape of a beak. Like a few, you know, the bird has a beak, so as if it's the mouth of a bird. So there are different sizes. Uh, again, these are from Wilton, uh, but different brands have the same usually designs. So. In the class video or the class image, I use the smaller one, but you can totally use the big one if you want. Depends on how much you know mixture you have, because I'm gonna show you different designs. I'm gonna use the smaller one, and it's number 352. The bigger one is number 366. So these are the leaf tips. And the piping techniques I'm showing you today, you can apply them to meringues, and you can apply them also to buttercream. So if you're piping buttercream on your cake, You'll get the same designs if you use these tips and these same techniques. So the last time when I did this, I piped a little bit of green leaves and then I piped a little bit of pink rosettes for the bouquet. And then with whatever green and pink was left, I mixed them together and I made this mini. So this is how you can play around with colors to get like two toned designs. I think we're gonna need a little bit more green, so let me get a little bit more. Even any color, it's already green. Because really, this uh, shop master are really like bright. Okay, so, so far we have the peach, the green, and the white. We still need the pink and the brown for the mushroom. Uh, so, we're just going to do that with whatever you know, better we have left. I'm gonna color a little bit brown and then with the peach we can color the pink later. So I'll just color the brown, we'll do all the designs and then we'll come later to the rosette. So let me get a small gold. Okay. We only need a little bit of brown because we're just using it to do the you know the tip of the mushroom. So this is the mushroom design. As you can see, it's just like a white, two branches, and then we have two brown circles, and then just we have leaves, which we already colored green for the leaves, so we can also use them for the mushroom. So for the brown color, you can just use any brown. I'm using chocolate brown from American Color. If you want, you can make your mushrooms also red. So really like, just be creative and Enjoy and make up your own designs. I think 
I'll add a little bit more color because I like the mushrooms like dark brown. mushrooms uh, for the head of the mushroom we also need the round tip the small one so it's the 12 a uh, 12 number 12 from uh, Winston to so this one which we used uh, for the white one so we're going to use it also for the brown if you don't have two like two round tips that's fine you can just pipe the white one first then you know transfer it into another bag and just put the brown So for meringues, you obviously need a baking sheet, preheated oven at 80 degrees Celsius, and you can either use a baking uh, like parchment paper or silicon mat. Both work equally well with meringues. So if you don't have a silicon mat, that's fine. We're going to use parchment paper today. Oh, sorry, somebody just joined. Okay. So we've got all our colors mixed, okay? We still will do the paint later from the peach. So we're just gonna get the baking sheet ready. And parchment paper. Okay. As I said, you can either use parchment paper or silicone masks. Both work really well with meringues. They're not very, uh, like meringues are not very finicky like macarons. They're not, they're not tricky. So if you've got the recipe right, you're gonna, you know, get the, uh, you know, the meringues right. Okay. So we can start first with the fox design. So remember, we use the large round tip, uh, which is one A by Wilton. And when you're cutting, so you put the edge of your tip is here, you just lift it up and cut a little bit behind it, not too much because you don't want the batter to come on the side, just a little bit behind it, okay? So, where's the fox? So this is the fox, okay? So as I told you before, what we're doing here is we're gonna do like a round shape, just like if you're used to piping rosettes and buttercream. For rosettes, what we do is we go counterclockwise. For the fox, we're gonna do clockwise. So we're gonna start at the center and we're gonna do clockwise and we're gonna end it like this, pointy, because that's the, supposed to be the tail. Okay, so let's start here at the center and then we're gonna do like this. Okay, so this is like the tail of the fox. So I'm gonna do it again. My hand is 90 degrees always and I'm gonna go clockwise, okay? So this is the fox. Uh, I'll do it one more time just in case you didn't get it. So start at the center and then go around and do it clockwise like this and end it with a tail, okay? So this is the tail of the fox, right? So obviously the face is not gonna be on the tail. So the face has to be on the other side, right? So if this is the tail, the face has to be this side. And for the face, you're just doing like a, a drop of batter and you're just forming it into like an oval. So you just want the shape to be like oval. So remember, don't do it on the side of the tail where you end it, do it on the other side and just like form like an oval, okay? 
Never mind these, we can always like smooth them out later. So again, this is the tail over here. So I'm going to do the face on the other side. So let's say this is the fox, so this face will be facing like this. So this is, will be the face of a fox, okay? So the tail is on this side. I'll do the face on the other side. And I'll do kind of like an oval shape, okay? And then I'm going to get the white, which I use the small piping circle tip. And I'm just going to use it to form uh, the mouth of the fox, okay? Because the eyes, we're going to use an uh, edible pen later to put the eyes. So for the mouth, we can do like a kind of a small heart shape. Okay, so on this, we're going to draw the mouth later. So remember, this is the face, this is the tail. So the mouth is going to be here. So just like draw a small heart. Doesn't have to be a heart. It can be like just a line. And for these pointy things, I like to smooth them out, either with your finger, with gloves, or with a spatula. So that when they bake, they don't have this pointy shape. Okay. So again, this is the last box. This is the face. This is where the eyes is going to be. So this is where the mouth is going to be. So this is the fox, okay? Now, with the same tip that we used for the facial de uh, you know, details of the fox, we're gonna do the mushroom, okay? So this is, remember, Wilton uh, 12, which is a small round tip. And uh, for the mushroom, remember that just use, always use a picture as your guideline so that you can know, you know what kind of design you need to do. So for the mushroom, we just have two branches, okay? So you, you see like one is a bit taller than the other, just, just be creative, make it as much taller as you want or as same size, it's all up to you. So I'm just gonna do like a small branch and then a longer one, okay? So we made the two branches of the mushroom. Remember we put brown again in the same tip, the small round tip. So that is going to be, let me zoom in, you can see closely, can I zoom in, doesn't zoom in. Okay. So for the mushroom, uh, for the head of the mushroom, we just need a circle. So just 90 degrees and just pipe a circle. Just let the batter come out. You're not really doing anything. You're just piping at 90 degrees and letting it come out, okay? And the same way we did the tips there, we're just gonna smooth them out here. Just smooth them out to the side and clean your spatula and then come back and smooth out the other one. Okay, so this is the head of the mushroom. If you want a thicker mushroom, you can just pipe stronger. So your hand is in control. Depending on how you are piping, the mushroom or the shape is gonna come out. So if I want like thicker branches, I'll just pipe out more. See, with the same tip, I piped a different mushroom design just by putting more pressure. And similarly with the brown. Just a bigger circle to make a bigger mushroom. And here is a little bit smaller one. Always smooth out these steps. Okay. And then you see how like we have, you can leave the mushroom like this. It's totally up to you. Or you can have leaves at the bottom. So remember for leaves, we're using tip 352 or you can use the bigger one, which is 366. And I'm going to show you first how to make like just proper leaves alone because leaves are used a lot on cakes so you can just design a whole cake based on leaves and you know make them as meringues so for leaves remember so far i've been putting my hand like 90 degrees for leaves no it needs to be almost 45 degrees toward the table like at an angle okay so i'm not like this i'm at an angle 45 degrees 
and I'm just gonna wiggle it out. Okay, so I'm getting obviously thin leaves because I'm using the thinner tip. If you use the bigger tip, you're gonna get wider leaves because it's bigger. So as I said, my hand is at a 45 degree angle and it's over the sheet. It's not touching the sheet, okay? So it's on the sheet and then I'm piping and going like left and right to create that leaf effect, like the wiggly effect, okay? So when you're doing the mushroom, remember that you want like the tip of the leaf to be facing the mushroom, right? So if you do it like this, the tip of the leaf is going to be downward, which is not right. So you have to do it the opposite way so that the leaf looks natural, you know. So I'm just piping one, you know, like one time just because I want small leaves on these mushrooms. Okay. So let me show you one more mushroom altogether, just as a summary. So we have a small branch. And then we can have like a fatter, longer branch on top. Or the tip will just have like a circle. Just play around with the shape, whatever you like. Okay, smooth it out. And when you're doing the leaf of the mushroom, remember, don't do it like this the same side of the mushroom because then you're going to get the leaf doesn't look natural like it is in nature. So you have to do it the other side basically. You just go to the other side and pipe out your leaf the same way 45 degree angle. Please don't get intimidated if you've never done this before. It's very easy. When you're doing it, it's completely different. So just when you're piping leaves, 45 degree angle on top of the sheet. Let it come out if you want a wider leaf. Just let the batter come out. See, so I was able with the same tip to create a bigger leaf. We're talking here same tips, you know, same person. It just all depends how you're fighting and how you're getting comfortable with your fighting and with your fighting bag, just getting used to it. And meringues are so forgiving. So whatever shape I'm doing, is still gonna come out cute. 45 degree angle, let it come out if you want a white relief. So just let it come out before you start wiggling and then start wiggling. Okay. See, you just can create different leaves. Every person will get different shapes of leaves, which is how it is in nature, right? Not every leaf is the same like the next. It's all different, it's imperfect. As long as you know the technique. So I'm just going to let it come out. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do the snail, okay? So I'm gonna get a, a new sheet so that you can see it clearly. We're gonna do the snail and the rosettes to create a bouquet. So in the meantime, you can leave the meringue outside the oven, like for maybe 30 minutes, not more, and then, or you can just directly put it in your preheated oven, which is uh, at 80 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna put it with the other one because it's not a meringue transfer sheet. If it's a meringue transfer sheet, I won't put it, sorry, on top of the other one. But since there's no transfers here, I'm not worried about the transfers. So I can just put it in the same oven with the rest, okay? I'm gonna get one more baking sheet. So I'm gonna show you now how you can do the designs with a silicone mat. This is a silicone mat. Usually like there's a Silpak brand, you can find it on Amazon or in local baking supply store and they're very high quality and you can reuse them as many times as you want. So for this nail shape, remember we said it's like an S shape and then it's the rosette. So for the rosette, you need the one M tip, okay? so. I'm going to color this peach uh, pink so that we can use it to make the rosettes, okay? So I'll just get a small bowl. Okay. 
I have this small bowl here. I'm just gonna pipe the peach inside. I can add a little bit of white. Okay. And then I'm just adding deep pink from Chef Master. Any pink will do, of course. Just mix it in. Like we mix the other colors. Okay, and now I'm gonna show you how you can do two dual colors. Like just how you have here like the green and pink mixed together, how you can do two or even three colors. This is the same technique, so I'm going to show it to you right now. Okay. So you're going to get your piping bag like we did before. And for this nail or for the rosette, we always use, whenever you're creating this shape, the rose, you can use the, either the Wilton 1M or the Wilton 2D. Okay, I think for this shape, I used Wilton 2D. So I'm gonna use the same today. Wilton 1M or 2D gave us similar this rosette shape. So we're gonna use 2D, because I already showed you the 1M with the meringue transfer sheet. So if you're adding two colors, you can just add you know, half the color on this side and half the other color on the other side. And then when you pipe, you're gonna get a nice like dual color swirl. So just when you're putting it, just put it to one side of the piping bag, not to, you know, to cover the tip completely. And then I'm just going to pipe the leftover green that we use for the leaves to the other side of the bag, so that when I pipe, I'll get a nice, like, multicolor rosette for the snail and for the roses as well. This is how you use like leftover batter. You don't waste anything. You can make different designs in the same batch. Or you can make an entire batch, you know, the same design. It all depends on what you're doing it for. So again, whenever you're cutting your piping tip, just cut it a little bit higher than the head of the tip so that it doesn't cut on the sides and you know make your piping harder. So now when we first start piping, of course, only the green is gonna come out. Okay, so it's okay, we'll have a few snails green and then we'll get the multicolor. So remember for the snail, always use a picture or a design as your guidance. Just want to make sure everybody is okay. Okay. So we're just drawing a kind of like a number two, which is short at the top. Okay. You can even use this design if you're making a swan. And for the back of the snail is just a rosette like this anti-clockwise. Remember we covered that before. Okay. So I think we need to make our snail a little bit Factor so that there's no gaps like here. Okay, so just control your piping and try to pipe stronger so that it comes up more, more comes out from the tip. Okay, so see how the same tip I'm able to pipe a different size, and then I'll just do the back of the same as a rose. And I'm doing it counterclockwise, just like we covered before when we did the meringue transfer sheets. And you see now the pink started coming out here in the center. So we'll do a couple of one. Remember, it's just like the letter S or the number two. I'm drawing it. And make it a little bit thick so there are no gaps in your design. And now for the rosette, I'm going to start here at the center and go anti-clockwise and draw like a rose okay so this is how we got the snails you can see the, the pink is starting to show and for the eyes we're going to do them later after they're baked we're just going to draw with an edible marker i'm just going to fix the face here because it's a little bit thin compared to that body and the next we're going to create these rosettes which are re really the easiest thing 
We've already done a couple of them. So just counterclockwise and create some roses randomly. You can do like different colors and create different bouquets of them. You can see the beautiful color that's coming out now, which is the green and pink together. So for example, if you want this for the snails, you, you could have piped the buttercream out until you reach this color and you, then you do the multicolored snails. And for the pumpkin design, you use the same tip, which is the either the 2D or the 1M. And you're just going to create the shape of the pumpkin. So we're going to do it. We have more white batter, but I'm going to show you uh, right now also. So, so for the pumpkin, first you'll draw a line in the center, a straight line. Okay. Then you're going to draw around it to form like the pumpkin shape. Okay. Just so, so this is the pumpkin, and then with the brown color, you can just do like the stem of the pumpkin. Okay, so I have more white buttercream. I'm gonna color it orange to show you how we can do like a pumpkin uh, pop, so like a lollipop. So you can do it on the same pan since we have space. But I'm just gonna color the white orange. One more bowl, lots of bowls today. Obviously, you don't have to do this whenever you do meringues. We're just doing it to show you the different things you can do with the same batch. But usually, when you're doing like a theme, one theme, you need like two or three colors maximum. You don't need to create all this mess. So I'm using sunset orange to make the meringue shape. And the best tip for doing meringues is this one. The one M, the star one M, the best one. This is what everybody use, uh, uses, and they pipe it even on cakes. So the one M is the best if, if you're doing that pumpkin design. Okay. So again, one more piping bag. star one empty because I'm going to show you how to do uh, pumpkin pops, pumpkin meringue pops. I think we can do one rosette with the leftover buttercream. Just a star. Okay. I think we'll be able to do one pumpkin only with this leftover butter uh, batter. So for the pops, you're gonna need like uh, either a straw or a lollipop stick. Because the pumpkin is orange, I'm gonna use this uh, gold straw. So you can use the straw for making like a cute uh, meringue pops, and you can do actually any shape. Okay. So when you're doing a meringue pop, the first thing you want to do before you put the straw is you'll pipe a little bit of the meringue just to stick it on it. So I'll just pipe a little bit here of whatever color you have. And I'll put the straw in it. So we're using the meringue as glue to fix the straw. And then you pipe your design on top. You can either pipe a rosette or you can pipe whatever shape you're doing. Today we're just going to do a small pumpkin. Just have a little bit of uh, batter left. So as I said before, just do like a small straight line for the center of the pumpkin. Move it closer to the camera. And then on the side, just draw, you know, the shape of the pumpkin. Just do it more like with an angle. Remember, the pumpkin needs to be like round at the top. 
And then you can do a stem, which is brown. If we had more green buttercream, we would have, I think maybe I can squeeze out a bit. And you can do a leaf for the pumpkin. Okay. So you can just get creative and do whatever designs you want. So uh, I covered all the designs that we were supposed to cover in the class today. So let me know if you have any questions about these designs or how to create designs, how to color designs before we just cover other things. Does anybody have any questions? I have a question out of this subject about the design. I wanted to ask sure. you, your recipe of meringue can be used then on the lemon pie, right? It can be eaten raw because it's, it can be considered pasteurized. And I wanted to do lemon pies, but I was worried about using fresh meringue. So I'm thinking, you know, then I can use your recipe for eating it raw, no, unbaked. Yeah. If you're going to do it, use the candy thermometer. If you're doing the yeah. candy thermometer and heating it up to 64 degrees Celsius, then it's safe to eat. So 64 is safe. There's no risk on that. No, no. After 64 degrees Celsius, it means the eggs are cooked. Okay, Not, I have uh, another uh, question uh, about the vinegar. You didn't put vinegar as well into your batter, right? Because hello, when you said you don't add vanilla, I realized something that when I added the vinegar at the end, this is when the egg, uh, eggy smell came out, comes out. This is why I need to add vanilla after I add the vinegar. So maybe if I skip the vinegar part, you think both and see. Yeah, yeah because so. honestly, I've done this recipe many times and never did I, like when I eat it, I never taste any uh, egg. Yeah, me too, until I add the one spoon of vinegar at the end, and this is where the, the egg smell comes out, and then I have to maybe like it, add the vinegar. Maybe it's letting it come out, maybe, the vinegar, yeah, letting probably. it come out. So try without. You got the recipe for the class, right? You yes, can uh, try that. I right? my email, right? I, I saw it, yeah. Thank yes. you. No worries. Anybody else has a question? Okay. So uh, I'm gonna check on the... I have one more question. Uh, how long can you store the meringue? And, uh, how long can you keep them in containers and use them on cakes? Uh, you can freeze them. You can freeze them. I always freeze them. Like the designs that I'm showing you today, or they're all frozen. And I reuse, I use, not I reuse, I use them for cakes later on. So nothing happens to them. You can freeze them. If you're storing them in the fridge, uh, sorry, I store them outside the fridge because it's just like candy, you know? Once it's baked, it's, it's, nothing happens to it. Uh, I would say like at room temperature for a few days, but if you want to keep them longer, just freeze them. Freeze them. And how do you get them? Oh, you don't throw them when you get them out of the freezer. You, you just put them directly on your cake. You know, meringues are already hard. So these were okay. in the freezer for the class oh, and they're just okay. ready in it. So just them them, take them out an hour before and then they'll be ready. Oh, perfect. Okay. They don't get humid, Diana. Yeah. Uh, no, nothing. All these were in the freezer just before, even when we started the class, I took them out. And oh. they're just as perfect as when I baked them. Nothing happened. Okay, good to know. Thank you. But you can store them at room temperature also for one week, I think. Because when you go to the shops, the bakers, you see they're selling the bags of meringues and they're, they're at room temperature. They're not even, they don't need a fridge. They're, they're baked. baked. As long yeah. as they, that they don't get moist, yeah, they, they stay crispy. Yeah. yeah. Outside the fridge, they stay perfect. Okay. So let's check the... How long has the class been? An hour and a half. Okay. So actually the... Maybe the meringue tractors have already baked. I'm going to check on them. I want to show you how they come. Yeah, they're already ready. So let me just clear up here. I'm going to put this pan in the oven. And the first pan that we put with the meringue tractors already done. And it's been like one hour and a half since we started the class. So that shows you, especially when you're doing smaller designs like this, they're gonna take an hour and a half. Maybe the bigger ones like the pumpkins will take around two hours maximum, but not longer than that. 
they really uh, bake quickly, even at a low temperature. So remember, these are the meringue transfer sheets from Sugar Art Canada, which is mostly in the class today. And uh, we bake them uh, at the bottom rack of the oven. Always when you're using these sheets, put them at the bottom rack of the oven, not in the middle rack. If you're doing other designs, like the other designs we did, you can put them in the middle or the bottom rack. It won't matter. But uh, always put these at the bottom rack and one pan at a time. OK, so I've already lifted one out to check it. And you can see that the design is already transferred to the bottom of the meringue. So this is the design is bigger than the smaller meringue. So I think the best shape for these was this one, the bigger. See how easy they is to lift off. And when I lift them off, I just clean the edges with my finger because the sugar gets stuck basically. And then you have a clean edge. I'm gonna check one more. They're just super easy to lift off. I think they need a little bit more baking time, but to, you know, for the purpose of demonstration, I took them out a little bit earlier for you. If we bake them a little bit longer, the shape will transfer much smoothly. Let me see before I lift up and ruin all of them. So this one, you can see how the shape is super clear. So you can also do meringue kisses. Uh, if you want to do meringue kisses, you need to use the tip, which is 1A, which we use for the fox shape, this one, the bigger round. And you can do the meringue kisses, just again, 90 degrees, let the batter come out quite, and then just lift your hand, you'll get that like, you know, like peak at the top for the meringue kisses. So I'm just going to lift off. Do you see how the shapes are clear? Because we are using white color. So see how this one is so cute with the, basically this shape is like a Halloween cupcake. It has the eye on, the goggly eye on top. And this one has like the spider. So these are so cute for making for teams, you know, for team parties or for kids. You can see how fluffy and light it is. I think I definitely could have baked them a bit longer, but it's okay because I did want to show you during the class how they come out of the sheet. So yeah, basically you need to bake them until when you lift them up from the sheet, they come out smoothly and you know this, uh, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> And the design transfers like smoothly. And then you can just with your finger, just clean off the edges to get like a clean shape. So you're getting all the cute Halloween shapes. So we have the goggly eye and the spider. Uh, what was the oven temperature? 80 degrees, 80 Eight. degrees plus. And that's a gas oven, right? Uh, no, it's an electric oven. I use electric oven. Ah, okay. But if you're using gas oven, just use the top and bottom, like both the top and bottom. If you can use a convection oven, like the fan on, use that. Yes, I use that. I have that. So what what should be the, the temperature for that? Temperature, 80. 80. And I think the best thing you can do, if you're not sure about your oven temperature, and you know, if you're starting off, uh, doing a new recipe, you can use these uh, oven thermometers. I'm just looking for one. Basically, it's trial and error to, to understand your oven, but uh, okay. Yeah, so I found that this oven thermometer, which I got from Lakeland here in the I can't find it right now. Uh, it's very accurate. It shows you the exact temperature of your oven because you know what happens when you're doing like macarons or uh, sorry, let me just transfer because I'm speaking so you can see my face. So when you're doing macarons or meringues, what happens is that we tell you like, okay, for macarons, you need to bake it at 140, for example, my macarons. But my oven may be different than your oven because, for example, in this spot of my oven, 
it's a higher temperature and you're, you know, for example, my macarons, I bake them at the bottom rack of the oven and that's the only way, place they work. Other people who have attended my classes use my same recipe, but they bake them in the middle rack. So I think the best way, I think what works in my recipes for both meringues and macarons is we're baking at very low temperature. So we're not gonna overheat or crack them. So you already remove one part of the problem. And the second way to safeguard and just you know be on the safe side is if you get these oven thermometers, I thought they're useless. Like I had it in my cabinet for so many years and I never used it until I started making macarons. Uh, and then I put it in the oven just to double check that, you know, the temperature was actually 140 and it shows you exactly which spot of your oven is 140 or in this case, 80 degrees. So it shows you, for example, if your oven is 90 and you have, you know, adjusted it to 80, it means your oven overheats itself. So maybe next time you'll put it at 70. So just yes. invest in the oven thermometers. If you want to skip, the, you know, the many trials and errors and the pain, just invest in them. They can help you. But Having said that, as I said, like meringues, we're baking at a very low temperature. Most often than not, you're not going to face an issue. And similarly, if you're going to do macarons, um, try to find a recipe with a low temperature or join one of my classes. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so uh, really, when you bake at a lower temperature, you uh, remove half of the problem that many people face. Thank you. So I think I've covered everything that I want to cover in this class. Uh, I've shown you how, like, because, you know, now the meringues are going to take two hours to bake. So obviously not, none of you are going to wait two hours. So I've showed you how they're going to come out after baking. This is the snail that we did. And what I did is I just got an edible marker, which again, you can find in your like local uh, baking or craft store. These are edible. This is by AmeriColor. There's another brand that I really like. It's called Foodoodler. So these are the best two brands of edible markers. And I just drew lashes for the eyes, but you can also do like a dot. Very simple, a dot for the eye, or you can do like a line for the eye. It's just whatever your basically uh, your taste is. For the fox, remember we did white for the mouth. So you will just do two dots for the eyes. That's it. And I also dusted the, I also dusted these snails with some uh, dust powder, white satin dust powder. You can also add like uh, some gold dust just to give it a nice touch. So these leaves, remember how we did the rosette pink and green. So for these leaves, I just mixed yellow and green, just the same way that I showed you today. So really now the creativity is endless. As long as you have a good successful recipe, you can just be as creative as you want. I want to show you one more design. So for these pumpkins, these small pumpkins, I posted them on my page before. What I use the same uh, recipe. And um, for these, I use the tip 6B or 4B from Wilton, which is again a star tip, but it, it, it gives you another design. And I just piped again 90 degrees, just 90 degrees stars, and it's already in the shape of a pumpkin. And for the stem, I used uh, the brown color that we did today. You can see there's a little bit gold dust on top. And then I've got all these pumpkins, and this has been in the freezer again for I think like two, three weeks. And I'm just gonna use it to top it on top of a cake. Because a lot of people don't know like, what can I use meringues for? You can either use them on their own to add them to your dessert table. You can do the pops, which are like nice addition to dessert tables or like for kids at parties, or you can even use them to decorate your cakes. So a lot of people who do cakes, like and sell cakes, they do like a big batch of meringues, like pastel pink, pastel blue, whatever colors they use on their cakes, they freeze them. And whenever they get a cake design, they'll just take two or three out of the freezer and put it on top of the cake along with macaron. You know, you see how those designs are, right? So obviously they don't just make a huge batch of meringue just for that cake. They just freeze them. And whenever they get an order, they just put two, three uh, on top of their cake. So they have different colors in the freezer and they just use it. And this is what I do with the meringue and what I do with buttercream as well, because 
Sometimes you need like a black color, just a little bit for your design. So obviously I'm not gonna do a batch of buttercream just for that small little black detail. So never throw away your ingredients. Try to, you know, freeze them and reuse them. Meringue stays for like, let's say two, three weeks safely. And buttercream the same way. I think buttercream stays uh, three months in the freezer. Nothing happens to it in the freezer. So yeah, these are the, the other pumpkin designs that I did. And also the design that I showed you today, which is the pop. I wish I can show you, but it's gonna take at least an hour and a half for it to, to bake. But uh, if you all, I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram, I already have the videos there. So uh, I already showed the result, how it comes out. So for example, the lollipop, after, if you wanna know if it's baked, if you lift it off from the, like when you lift it off from the shoe, it should be dry on the other side. So all the meringue should be dry. If it's a little bit wet, when you lift it off, it means they're not baked yet. You need to put them back in the oven. Nothing happens. You can just put them back in the oven and bake them longer. So that's your guide to know whether they're ready, baked or not. So let's say that they're dry. Okay. Again, you can break it. And it should be dry in the middle as well. It shouldn't have like liquid or like very eggy because then you know like it's underbaked and obviously you don't want anybody to eat raw eggs. So just make sure that it's baked. So yeah, this is basically what we wanted to cover today. Unless you guys had any other questions. So remember, um, you're gonna get, you have the recipe and you're gonna get the recording of the class. So in case you didn't bake the meringues today, you will just get the recording and then you can do it at your own pace and just watch the recording again. Thank you. Basically, you answered all my questions about the meringue and I'm ready to start trying out these nice uh, cookies, meringue cookies. Thank There's you very so much. much. Uh, there's so much when they're piping is so like therapeutic like really like when I'm not in a good mood I'll just make meringues and just start piping and then you'll just forget the whole world yeah, it's, it's so much fun and if we order these um, what did you call them <laughs> uh, sugar, and transfer. how long do they need to arrive to uh, the Gulf yeah, two or three days or I think more time uh, I, don't know. I use shop and ship service. I don't know if you have it, like with IMAX. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so with that, I think within two weeks you'll get them. Two weeks. But if you're shipping directly from, uh, from the Sugar Art Canada, because they ship worldwide, uh, but I think for me, I find it cheaper if I ship like through IMAX because these don't weigh a lot. So they're not going to be a uh, big weight. But if you ship them directly from Sugar Art, I think one of my students told me. Uh, takes around 21 days because she ordered them for one collaboration that we're doing and I think it's at 21 days because it's by post. Just to know the time. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So for the people who joined late, I think one person joined a little bit later after we started. Uh, as I said, don't worry, you're going to get the recording of the class so you can rewatch it from the beginning at your own pace. I'll just check with Sugar Art Canada when they will send that out. Um, but for sure they'll mail it to you guys because we're going to actually sell this class now this class is going to be sold as a recorded class but you girls got the advantage of you know watching it live so you're going to get the recording as well for the class thank you so much for joining today thank and you. if you have any other questions on meringues or any other topic related to baking just don't hesitate to contact me and I'm happy to assist you Thank you so much. Hope you all had a good class. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.